tell them your um, hypothesis. My, my hypo- hypothesis. My, my what? Hypotenuse. <laughs> <laughs> my hypothesis. I, you know, if I get the first syllable correct, you know, I and it's I on the right track, points. I think everybody knows what I'm talking about. But I liked hypothesis better. Hy- hypopotamus. Hypopotamus. My hy- hypopotamus. Hello friends, welcome back to another restoration video. There's been a lot of restoration happening between the last video and this video. A lot. But we kind of wait until we got a lot of juicy stuff well, people to are give always, you guys. A lot of people, not, not everybody, a lot of people don't care about the restoration videos, which we don't understand. But some people say, we wish you would do more restoration videos. And we could, but if we did, a lot of it would be like, this is the stick we put up today. Yeah. Not as exciting as if we wait till we have a whole bunch of good juicy stuff. But we got a bunch of juicy stuff for you today, don't we? Yes. You know what I feel like Let's hear the it. last six weeks have been? What? The world's longest, most terrifying, high stakes game of Jenga. Oh. For don't sure. You? Oh, for sure. Well, it started, that, started with the roof removal. Right, which you've seen. Was, yeah, which was our last restoration video and was definitely a big 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 game of jenga yeah like in the like and not a, with not huge a, tools not a fun game of jenga not the kind that you laugh and laugh if things like fall a, down like a game of jenga if you were living in a jenga house yeah. <laughs> and it fell down you would die if you had spent a, mu- a bunch of money on a ta- jenga on house. your jenga game yeah. and if it fell down you would have no home that's the game of jenga we've been All right. playing <laughs> so we have a lot to tell you about today uh we have a major event happened at yes. the cottage. We're gonna save that to the end and we're gonna cover the main house and the L yes. uh, before we get to that. So you don't wanna miss that, stick around. But uh, a ton has gone on here. So last time they saw the roof was being removed. Well, it was inevitable, right? It was, it was inevitable. We couldn't, we couldn't leave it. Look, we've been doing this for a really long time, right? 20, how many years, 20 years? 20 more than 20 years, 25 24 years. 24 years. I thought I was emotionally prepared for what this was going to look like when this happened, but I am not. I was not prepared for this. I mean, I know it's got to get worse before it gets better, but this level of worse. <laughs> <laughs> this is camping under the stars worse. I'm not prepared for. I mean, I just have to keep reminding myself that we said we're just going to have like a studded out house. It's going to be like a studded out house that's been like that's just in that isn't even in the dry yet i have to remember that but it felt so much more like more house before this i'm just rambling because this is really then what was the next big step lane demo so much there's no way to overstate the amount of demo that had to be done here you look like you're in a war zone i feel like i'm in a war zone I mean, technically, I will say that for the next two years, this is going to be a war zone. So we're battling, we're battling against the loss of this space in this house. We'd like to once again thank Curiosity Stream for sponsoring this video. You know Curiosity Stream by now. They offer award-winning films, shows, and series that you can't find anywhere else. You know we love them and we watch Curiosity Stream all the time. Right now I'm watching Planet Insect. It's a Curiosity Stream original three-part special. It tells you how the last two decades of research have revealed extraordinary new insights into the unexpectedly sophisticated insect world. And I'm so excited to watch all three parts. 
There are alien worlds right under our noses. Insects. As close to an alien life form that we'll ever see without leaving planet Earth. We know that many of you are here because you love to learn. Well, Curiosity Stream has got you covered. With a focus on science, history, and technology, Curiosity Stream is perfect for anyone who loves to learn. Their documentaries are informative and engaging, making it easy to expand your knowledge on a variety of topics. And I love how affordable Curiosity Stream is. With plans starting at under $5 a month, you can gain access to thousands of hours of high quality documentaries and series. With both monthly and annual plans available, you can choose the plan that works best for you and your budget. Go to curiositystream.com restoration or scan the QR code for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and nonfiction series. And for our fans, use promo code restoration to get 25% off an annual subscription. That's curiositystream.com restoration for 25% off right now. Part of the part of what happened, what happened was <laughs> what um, happened. There was a fire. There was house. a fire, which that in of itself <laughs> that was bad it enough. Started. But of course, to put out a fire, we have to use copious mm. amounts of water. Water, and I'm still working on. Uh, and you, if you want to get in and help me, I'm going to create a way to just throw a big dust bomb on top of a house. <laughs> And it puts out the fire like and that. doesn't get everything wet. I don't know, but is dust worse or better than water? Uh, I don't know. Yes. Okay. We'll get a blower and blow that stuff okay. out. Okay, well, and then we didn't have a roof for all those months. So every time it rained. Still. It rained in the house. So we ended up with massive, everywhere that had been okay after the fire, all of a sudden was soaking wet and covered in mold. Um, this home had had at one point had cellulose insulation blown into the walls, which typically we are 1,000 million percent against. We can go into that another day, the reasons why. But we kind of think in this house, maybe it kept the house from burning right. all the way to the yes. ground. The 1820 portion of the house, specifically the L, the first room of the L. We should tell them what an L is. L is actually an architectural term. Yes, and it's, well, it's an architectural term. It's L, it's spelled E-L-L. -L. And its actual definition is an extension from a main house at a 90 degree angle, which takes the form of the letter L. <laughs> so why don't we just use the letter L when we're referring to an L instead of spelling yes, it out E-L-L. -L. But there, but there's your first lesson for the day. That and hypotenuse and hippopotamus are the same thing. <laughs> Hypothesis. Hypothesis. Um, so this is a balloon frame house and what that means in the 1820 portion. In the main portion, we've got the bousillage. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute too because we didn't know about that in the last video. We've got the bousillage timber frame construction, but in the 1820 portion, it's balloon frame, which means there is no belly band in between the first floor and the second floor. Typically speaking, in new construction, you build your, you've got your sill plate, your stud wall, and then your ceiling plate. Then you're going to have like a belly band that wraps around and you're going to have your floor joists for your second floor and then your bottom seal, your, your stud wall and your top seal. So you're going to have some, some things that break in there. Well, in a balloon frame house, your stud walls go from the bottom seal to the top seal. In this case, how many feet tall are they? Uh, let's see. Like 27 they've, feet? They've got to be about that. Yeah, 24 four to 27 feet yeah well, but, but it's but this, it's not to the roof height it like literally extends past that even it went all the way up to the peak yeah, of so that basically back in the time when you were milling your own lumber and you just made it however long you, you wanted could literally it. make it 30 feet long the board so you Which have the ceiling these, joists were also 27 28 feet yes all of our stud walls are 16 inches on center and so basically what you have are little vacuums that should have just sucked that fire straight down into those little vacuums and burned this house to yeah, the ground. We were very fortunate. But they were full of that cellulose insulation, which is very flammable until you saturate it with water. And when it gets super wet, not only does that then remove the oxygen, which would have pulled that fire down through the wall, but it also puts this sloggy wet material in there that mm. isn't going to burn. That fire's not real excited about. And yeah. hallelujah, 
we did not lose the entire structure of the L. It's just the second floor that really took the brunt of right. the fire. And I'll, something else I'll mention now too is that once we removed the roof, the the ceiling joists, the roof structure, all the truss and the rafters were gone. Gone. So we removed that roof. Normally Lane and I come in and we take out the pieces that are rotten or or bad or falling down and we replace them. We here, can see what was there. Yes, we here know we're having to built. figure it out. <laughs> we know how it was built the first time, so we know how to put we it back. We don't do new construction, so we no. don't come in and like, okay, let's throw up a roof. And and this this is particularly challenging. <laughs> not not only is it challenging just because there's nothing there for us to even go by. guess how it was done yes. because it burned, but the house behind us is four different structures. So your first room, this is the 1789 portion of the house. It is timber frame with Coulombas and Beausillage. You move behind it, you move over here, you've got 1820. You move uh, to the dining room, you've got 1820. Behind it, you have 1820. And then the kitchen, what we're using is the kitchen, would have been the original kitchen, is an 1830 structure. You have four build dates. Every one of those rooms, the ceiling plates are at a different height. The ceiling Crazy. joists run a different direction. Yes. yes. Um, the framing, like I said, there's both bousillage and colombage in the 1789 structure. Then we get into balloon framing on the 18. 10, 20, you've got further balloon framing on the 1830, but but they're individual little It's like they structures. shoved different houses together. But, and put a roof on it. But they did a good job of making the ceilings all look uniform, the roof looked uniform. But it's not. But it's not. It's so we're having to, you know, figure that out as we go also. Like I said, world's biggest game of Jenga. It's yes. like a Jenga puzzle, too. You saw the early videos of how deep the debris was in there, and they started cleaning out almost immediately and they did do a lot of cleanup before we even took possession yeah but there was still so much and it wasn't just you know the fallen debris it was we're having to take down some studs we're having to remove a few joists because they are too burned to keep yeah there's there's in the l especially now in the main house we're very 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 fortunate um as far as structure that was lost the kitchen ceiling joists all had to be replaced. Um, a few in what will be the main bedroom, a few sisters in what will be the front parlor and the dining room, but other than that, we're pretty good. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Now we did we did splurge on something. Um, <laughs> you should know. Yes, we didn't have to do this, no. but we wanted to. I'm a purist to a stupid extent. In the living room, the main parlor, the 1789 portion, we still have all but one of the original hand planed ceiling beams that are beaded. So they originally they would have been exposed. Uh, I'm sure just like the house, the Creole farmhouse that we just showed you last week, if you go back and watch that, I'm sure the ceilings originally in that 1789 room looked just like that. So we went and found a 20, right now it's 24 feet long, right? Uh, or 27 feet long? I can't remember. What did we need? 22? We need 22 feet. It was about 24, 25, something like that. Yeah. Foot long cypress beam that was taken out of a structure from 1800. So it is right at the appropriate age, and we are going to we are going to hand cut the join, and we're going to put it back in there. Um, obviously, and nobody, then cover it up. And then cover it up. <laughs> no, but in the future, people will be able to tell that it's a replacement. It's it's. We're not trying to make it look like it's the original. We're not trying to disguise it. That's that's against the rules anyway. But I just like psychologically didn't want to think about there being two brand new modern pine two by twelves or whatever up there to, yeah. to make up that ceiling joist. So we're putting yeah. a period beam in and we're going to cut it so that it, it mortise and tenons into that spot, which I'm ridiculously I, excited about. I feel about. good about that too. Yeah. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was a good find. Of course, 601 salvage Mac, yes. our friend Mac had it over the there. Best. We've got uh, bought two sinks over there the other day. We love going there. Um, we're also 
we've got many of the studs are pretty good up until maybe the top few inches. They're actually missing. So we could pull those out completely and put in a new stud, but instead we are sistering in a full board next to that existing board. And what does that do for you? Well, you've got to reach your top and bottom or you're not going to be able to carry your load, right. but uh, it does strengthen, strengthen the uh, board cheap, side to side the, having that the board The cheap, there. crappy modern lumber gets a lot stronger when you sure. when you sister it to a 200-year-old right. heart pine 3x4. Are they 3x4, 3x5? Oh, they're three so by five. big. We're having to take 2x8s or 2x6s and down. cut them down to fit. Uh, but it also leaves that old lumber in the house again, even though it will be covered up. We want to leave as much in as we can. Well, and speaking of leaving as much in as we can, we discovered when we took the roof off and took the walls that were existing, um, all the material off the walls that was there in the second floor of the L, at some juncture, and I really suspect from the oxidation, oxidization, there's my words. Sounds like one of my words. Yeah, that had occurred on the wood. In one of the 200 plus year old mortise and tenon joints where the, the there were mortise and tenon together and then pegged, that that had pulled apart by about a half an inch and a half maybe uh yeah a good inch and a half two inches yeah so that that had really pulled apart um and i think it had happened a hundred years ago or more Might i have. don't think that was something that happened with the yeah, roof removal. because the, the because the wood in between yeah, looked like had it oxidized. had been, yeah it right. had it wasn't like oh this hasn't seen the light of day or air in a hundred years like it looked like it had right. had been getting oxygen for a long time um, so we ratcheted that dude back together and put that peg back in <laughs> and pegged it back together again. I know that was cool. That was, that felt like we were doing the work that, you know, yeah. that they did. Yes. So back much then. of it we're having to do with modern methods, which it is killing me every time yeah. we take a tenon <laughs> off or, um, yeah, that's, that's killing me a little bit, but, but, but we still have huge timbers that are in wonderful condition both in the main house and in the L. And that makes me feel really good because we're talking some of these beams are eight by oh. eight by six. Uh, they're just enormous. They're unbelievable. This is what we keep trying to tell y'all is back here uh, behind the lab and plaster. There are enormous studs. This house is so solid. That's at least two and a half by four, four and a half true. I don't know if you can tell from my hand, this is large. And that's what one of the things that makes this house so sturdy and why we feel like this is a, easy to save. You know, we're just going to take take it back down to these stud walls, put drywall over them and, and build it back. Look at the beams. Look at this beam. Look at this beam. Put your hand up there. <laughs> so for all the people who keep asking, is there even anything left to save? So much. I'd say. Should we talk about the bousillage in case, like many people, in case they missed it in the last didn't one? Watch sure, yeah. The talk about the, tell them video. about the bousillage, which was a great find. That was the most exciting discovery of the house so far. I'm sure we will make more, more, but so far the bousillage. So we demo out the wall, the lath and plaster, and what had been Miss Ethel's sitting room. And we just did a small section at first. And when we did the first small section, I looked at it and said, "This looks like timber framing." Right. But timber framing. We frame, saw the notches. Yes. At, but we didn't know what they were. At yes. First. Well, I mean, they look like timber frame. That's the thing. I was looking at it thinking, this looks like British timber framing because that's what I was familiar with from my learning was English British timber framing where um, timbers are used against one another and they, they put, they, in British architecture, they call them staves, which you have two two posts and you put your staves in between and then you put your waddle and daub in there. And I thought, this really looks like timber framing but when this house was built the British were not here in Natchez so how weird that we would have used a very British form of architecture English form of architecture um, in this Spanish territorial period but it was built by a Frenchman the governor that built this house was a French Canadian who was a governor for the Spanish uh, government Carlos de Grand Prix Carlos de Grand Prix well what we discovered for a little bit of research is the construction type is called bousillage um, it is taken from the French tradition of colombage, which is their form of half timbering. They're not called staves in bousillage, they're called baton. Um, and that is what is used here. It is colombage, bousillage with baton. Um, the material that they use 
it, it really sort of developed heavily in southern Louisiana. And they used mud um, and Spanish moss to make torches, which are basically lobes of mud that kind of look like big, big we had loaves. Just a little Tiny bit of bit. that existing. Tiny bit. And, and they, they had one baton. So one baton. One baton left. Um, and they put that in those, in those, you know, alcoves between the, the timbering. And then they would either whitewash over the whole thing, or they would put then, um, you could put lath and plaster over the top of it. You could put cladding over the top of it. So we have discovered that this portion of the house, the 1789 portion is done with um, moussillage. And upon further investigation, we're missing a room. There was another room off of the back. You can see from the way that there are some mortise and tenon holes. And then the boussillage holes for the baton run what would be perpendicular to that front room. So, so there would have been on beyond. another room that when they did the 1820 edition, they would have cut off. And you and wouldn't wrapped. think that would be a porch because they wouldn't do that to a porch. Well, you wouldn't have put, so the thing that makes it not a porch to me, because someone suggested someone who was just kind of quickly glancing at it said, oh, well, this could have just been like a shed roof. But you have, I don't think they were looking at that last timber that has the stave holes right. that run perpendicular to the house. So there was another wall that came out and you certainly wouldn't wall, put another like an finished interior, wall, yeah, yes, wall yeah. um, on a porch at any so, point. So what a fantastic find. I know that's that was, a lot of information, but we are really excited we about that. We are excited about that. <laughs> And, uh, you know, we've had several people come visit the house just to see, the just to see that. But so we are one of only two houses in Natchez that it is confirmed have boussillage construction. Oh, the, what's other the other one? is the house on Ellicott Hill, oh. and it's the same build period, about 1789. So definitely there's, there's precedent for the style in the area. I was really hoping we'd be the only one. <laughs> uh, but no, Carter disappointed me. Carter with the H&F was like, oh, no, no, no. The house on Elkhart Hill has it too. <laughs> so, I know. But I know. it was really thrilling. But I mean, there, you know, it was a tragedy for this house to burn. But there are so many opportunities. And that's why everybody's so interested because now it's opened up and they can see the construction. Uh, it also gives us the opportunity to put in brand new electrical and brand new plumbing and put on a brand new roof. And so brand new HVAC. And yes. Like and all so, the systems will be new. Yeah. And in many ways, it's going to be better in that way because I told somebody today, because, you know, even if we'd bought this house before it burned, it needed a lot of work. It would have well, taken a lot of work to get it into really good condition. For instance, here's something we never would have known. We never would have known this when we gutted out the lath and plaster in what was the original kitchen. The entire load bearing wall next to the fireplace, the studs are completely eaten away from termites. And I don't mean like, oh, there's some termite damage. No, they're they're gone. They're gone. Now they're they look like they're there, but I'm sure we'll go back here and film it in a second. They're gone. And that that is a very important part of the structure that needs to be reinforced and needs to be rebuilt and we would never never have known because well, we would never have taken that and lath also and plaster they out. had put in a bathroom where you know they these old houses you kind of shoehorn in oh, a bathroom yeah they had cut away studs and not put any kind of support well, no headers they cut away the header and they cut away the, the header the top plate cut it away and left it you know there's the, like this much room <laughs> yeah those things you get to see and go and, and fix you make know? sure you repair properly right. so the house stands for another 220 years um one thing that that, I, that that area that we're talking about is so fascinating to me because that area is also so not only do you have the boussillage right there it also shows you where they pegged the 1820 structure to the 1789 structure you can see where they joined it there's a peg remaining now we've lost a lot of structure right there because that is where they shoehorned in a bathroom in the 20s um but in this one little one little camera shot of of space is the first 50 years of the home's history just encapsulated existing in the wall and it hasn't been seen since 1820 so, and that's i mean 200 years yes. that it's been hiding we just have to look at the positives and those are some of the positives at least i really there were a couple days i will be honest right after we finished the demo um there were a couple days are you having a breakdown where i was having a breakdown and i really thought we have made the most colossal mistake this is so much i'm overwhelmed by no. this how many times have we told you guys we buy these houses Half built, 60% built, 70% well, built. I was, I was built. having, I was having a day. I had a couple days. I had a couple days, but I got over yes, it. Yes, hopefully very now quickly. you can see when the framing's going back up. This is how this house was 65% built, 70% yeah. built. Uh, so we just have to finish it off, and and then we're all going to have all new electrical and plumbing. Like I said, 
it's going to be better than it was in some ways. So that's be, the well, way I we have to, to say, look at it. I don't want to really say it's going to be better. <laughs> well, I want to say it'll have better electrical. How it's about the that? best version of itself, right? I think it's it's the it's the safest and best version of what it can be in 2023. Um, obviously, we've lost some irreplaceable materials in the fire, but we are going to be able to put things in place that will protect it for another 200 years. I'd also really like to look into putting in a fire suppression system. That's something we can talk about later. Right, but which we also saw in that house yes, in Louisiana that we I just would, featured. Yeah, I'd really like to talk about that. When you are dealing with a house that's over 200 years old, your idea of what is old <laughs> changes very quickly. Right. If I was working in a house Makes built me feel young. in 1920, and I found something that was put in in 1927, I would be ecstatic that I had basically an original material in the house. <laughs> but we're working in a house that was built in 1789 and then the portion that we were in is 1810 or 20. So I had very strong suspicions that about four walls were added when Catherine Grafton Miller bought the house in 1926. We knew she had undertaken a massive renovation not a restoration a renovation of this house in 26 and so we were going to take those walls out um, because they're non-original and they were new construction inside of this we wanted to take this back to its earliest iteration it's just so funny 20th century that's 100 how new. years old and it's <laughs> too new to be in that's this house funny. but we didn't know exactly the build date on this wall we had no idea we suspected it was very near her 1926 by date but we didn't know. I mean, it could have been 1940 for all we knew. Yeah. We really didn't know. Ethel might have put it in. We really didn't know when it happened. Well, what did we find in there? Uh, we found, well, I guess the builder had signed it, which we do a lot, yep. right? We get in and inside the walls. We signed it and date it. Just find something, Lane. I did. H.R.R. Roberts, or H.R. Roberts, 2-19-1927. So we've been saying that Catherine Grafton Miller and her husband, J. Balfour Miller, redecorated this house, redesigned it in 1926. Well, they finished it around 1927 because that's when the wall board went in, around February of 1927. <laughs> Did you go and retrieve a better tool? Uh, this is a little better. But look, you brought two tools. I've got my little straight edge here for the bottom. the big dog <laughs> so should we talk about the evolution of <laughs> of our process <laughs> always okay sure <laughs> so what we start with, with pocket knife okay which was handy right right and thought mm, i need something more a little serious mm -hmm. a little more serious yeah. i went and got the utility knife right and a straight edge eh. no so Just now we're cutting it you know i gotta have my power tools <laughs> and my favorite tool my <laughs> oscillating saw so is this not just sort of standard operating procedure for us? Like I usually go straight to the oscillating side. Well, but I, to find power. That's the problem. I feel like we always are like, this will be quick and easy. <laughs> and, then it could, yeah. and then it never is quick and easy. No, All right. So let's show us if we had gone with, it's going to take us five minutes more to set it up, how quick and easy it would have been. Yeah. All right, here we go. <laughs> So that took about 20 seconds to do what we spent 30 minutes <laughs> trying to I wouldn't say 30 minutes. <laughs> Ta-da! There it is. Keepsake. Yeah. I can frame that. Love it. Thank you, baby. You're welcome. And, and it was a literal fluke that we saw that piece of drywall before it was pulled out because the guys had started the demolition in that part of the, the house. They'd finished their work for the day. We came over to see how the demolition was going. They had, they I, didn't notice it at all. They I didn't just, see it. They didn't see it. I just happened to look down and think, that looks like pencil, that looks like pencil marks right there. It looks like pencil and bent down and 
sure enough. So we've saved that yes. for posterity. It's in storage. It will go in a frame probably in yeah. the house. Yeah, so that was a fun find. That was a that was a good day. But, but, then, yeah. but then we also knew, okay, this, this wall is 1927. It can come out with absolutely sure. no, yes. no impunity on our part. So the back right, the back side and the back right side had been chopped up into some different so things. Many different so that's spaces. the big difference that's happening in the main house. We opened that back up. We're going to turn that into our main bedroom and then we're going to take the right side which was broken into a few things and make it our main bathroom. Yes. So the and main bedroom house and sitting room. So it'll be kind of a combo right. private private space quarters, right. For us. And and so the main house which is about 2400 2500 square we, feet. I still don't know. I still have no idea. Is going to be uh, one bedroom, one and a half bath. Uh, and as we start framing out those rooms, you'll you'll get a better understanding of what we're going to do with the spaces. But, but we that, have that we had space, to make decisions early. Yeah, that that the main house, this one, will be a completely private space, just for us, with one bedroom in it. <laughs> Which is really great because the L will be used. We're going to put either. We're going to either put three or four bedrooms, or wait, four or five It'll bedrooms. It'll be four or five bedrooms in the L. In the L. Uh, we're still yet to decide on one of the rooms. Yes. Um, with en suites, and then we'll also have the cottage that we're working on. Um, but so ultimately, this will be a five or six bedroom house with all of them will have en suites. Um, so if we want to do Airbnb, we can. If our parents need to come live with us in their dotage, they can. And everybody can have their own space. We're going to try. Very few of the homes that are uh, bed and breakfast here in Natchez are ADA accessible. We're going to try. <laughs> going to try. Don't hold us to this if we don't do it. But to make one of them ADA accessible. Uh, it's very difficult to do in a house that's too... This is in the 1820 portion, so it's going to be... It's going to be tough. It's doable. But we think we can... The, the doors are wide enough. The room that is the bathroom is big enough to give us all the clearances that we need. We just need. have to build two small ramps. Yes. Um, and then a couple other, there'll be a couple other things that we have to do. So we're going to really try. That, that's important to us. And it will be a two-bed oh, suite. Whack that. Um, it's important to us, but we have to, it's going to be, it's going to be a challenge. So everybody keep your fingers crossed that we can make that, make that work. Wouldn't that be great though? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And it's on the first floor. Um, because one of the things when we had our first Restoring Hope weekend, one of the people who came, her husband's in a wheelchair, and she really wanted him to be able to come and participate in a lot of the things, and he just couldn't because none of the houses here are accessible. And mm -hmm. they don't they don't have to be. They're not required by law because they are historic structures. But I just I think it's terrible that people are missing out on the fun and the beauty of these homes because they can't get into them. So we're going to try really hard to make that happen. So yes. Um and we are changing up the those did have bathrooms each one of those rooms they are enormous rooms and then they shoved a little bathroom in some weird space we're going to do it a little bit differently yes. we're going to make the bedroom smaller and the bathroom much bigger actually some of them very big but the bedrooms will still be huge don't think like oh, oh it's going to be a tiny bedroom yeah, and a big bathroom they're only no. going to be 20 by 18 now <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous how yeah. big they are. They're going to be enormous rooms with large, very comfortable bathrooms. There was one be bedroom upstairs, <laughs> the last one on the L, that they had taken a closet um, that it, how no, many inches? I'd say it's 24? six by 24. 24 much. inches wide. And they had put a, a shower in the end of it that was about 24 by 24. So literally, if you dropped your soap, you were crawling out of the shower to get your. I mean, I cannot imagine. Well, and then the imagine. other four or five feet, they had a sink and a toilet. And a toilet. Like yeah. the smallest bathroom ever. I've ever seen in my life, but people obviously still love staying here. To have here, a shower so in it. I know. So, it's crazy. Shower, like, can you imagine you showering oh in a shower? Oh my gosh. No. I don't think you would fit this way. I know. You'd have to stand on the, on the angle, <laughs> on the diagonal. <laughs> I just have to wash me off with the hose outside. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but so we are going to be making major changes to those that we'll share blueprints with as we have yep. those here uh, Maybe the next restoration video. Yeah, you'll get to see some of that We we had had things progressing on the cottage and we were doing a little bump out room in the back uh, Just an 8 by 8 room that we were going to put a laundry room because we're going to be living in there now If you yeah. were just coming to stay for a weekend you or a week care about a laundry. You wouldn't need a laundry room, but we're going to be living in there for as long as a year possibly yeah uh, so we wanted a little laundry room, a little stack washer and dryer, and some closet room. And so we put a little 8x8 eight eight on the back. Well, people working in there. Yeah, you know, we had folks working in there. and things. New roof were, on it. 
think, yes, a new metal roof. Things are coming along. Well, then one day I get a panicked call. We're sitting at dinner. We should never go to Just dinner. Just don't go to dinner. The calls Think that how we, thin we'd be. Uh, right? <laughs> and we always get the panicked phone calls when we're at dinner. We're going to stop going out to eat. Anyway. Uh, Y'all need to come out here. A tree came down. And uh, as always, I think best case scenario. I'm thinking like a tree. Oh, my no. gosh. No. No. A tree literally this big. 30, 30 to 36 inches in diameter, I'd say. I'm gonna try to get you some idea of scale on the height of this tree, so, let's see. This is the top of it, right here. It fell, there's the cottage. So it fell all the way across the back. So let's walk all the way around. And there's the end of it. <laughs> And to give you some indication, the cottage is 30 feet long. So it was a hundred year old red oak. Red oak. Red oak. Red oak. The the root ball just wasn't big enough. It wasn't deep enough. It well, was the root ball was the problem. And it had been raining for about a week and everything soggy was ground. soggy. So that tree falls and it's coming right at the cottage. Well, there's a tree here and it is in the cottages here, the trees here. It falls like this. That tree keeps it from falling directly on the cottage. There's another huge tree here that it stays in between these two trees, falls right there. It did completely take off the eight Sheared by eight room. Off the new Annihilated room. it. Took out some scaffolding. Like a surgeon's scaffold. Thankfully, I mean, like, no one was back there working. Hallelujah. Someone was in the house. But they were able to run out. Yeah, um, hallelujah. And Praise no the one Lord, was injured. No one was in there. I mean, but a massive, massive so it tree. Took out, took off the new build, took out a pier, one pier it took out, kind of shifted things around a little bit everywhere, but not badly enough that we're having to do any kind of like structural re redoing. <laughs> remember what else that we lost in that oh. we had taken out all of the I'm windows across. taking out windows too because that's what happened with Louise <laughs> that's true we took out all the stop taking windows. out windows <laughs> fix them in place uh, we took out all the windows to repair those and they were being stored in yeah, the new build which is a perfectly was good place us, to put them put them in there and he, he was right it was the safest place for them to be they were out of everybody's way nobody was gonna hurt them touch them, so break them. they just got smashed uh -huh. I was luckily enough, able to find some that were almost exactly the same, just a two inches off here, two inches off there. Just enough that we're going to have to re rebuild the frame. the frame for all the windows. Yeah. But, but uh, they are very similar. You won't be able to tell that they're different windows necessarily even, but um, but we lost all those windows, had to so buy new happened. windows, have to frame out new windows, had to replace that room again. On this little cottage ah, that's just been kind of a, just never you know, it, it's always the little, like the, the things in the main house are going so smoothly and so beautifully. They're just kind of flying along so much faster than I thought that they would. The cottage is the bane of my existence right now. <laughs> it is the, they're like 52 projects are a half done, maybe a third done if we're lucky taking 12 times longer than it should. So mm. after the first of the year, we're gonna get in there and we are gonna get it done, right? Right. People keep asking us why we're not working on the cottage ourselves. While are we're, they? We're, yeah, I keep getting a lot. Why aren't you guys just doing it? Why aren't you guys just doing it? Cause it's literally, it's every single thing we could do and faster. We're still suffering from a lot of fatigue from that last, 
from January to April of last year of 2023 was so hard. It was hard. I mean. We were exhausted, especially the last, what was it, the last the two last or two three months. weeks that we did like 16 hours a day every day? Every day. 18 hours a day? I right. know that from January until April, we did not take a weekend. I don't know. Like, we didn't know what day of the week it was. We worked every single yes. day. And we were trying to get it finished. Finally did. And then we were like exhausted. I'm never doing this again. <laughs> well, we were exhausted the whole time, but yeah. we pushed through. So so we're going to pick up some hammers I and some like I nail feel, guns. I feel I'm feeling ready again. I, I was so. not feeling, I did not feel ready. I did not feel like I ever wanted to do it again. Um, so you'll get to see us uh, <laughs> sweating a little bit. <laughs> Actually freezing probably because it's I don't know. end of December I now. I would but like today, to point out that it's oh, December the 22nd. It's, it's 72 every day degrees. We're like this. Oh my gosh. That is why one of the reasons we live here is because uh, the winters are about love 10 degrees warmer here than they are at home. And the winters at home are warmer than everywhere else in the world so we love uh, if if you can love winter time which i really don't think i can but if you can <laughs> love winter time you can love it here i have camellias blooming all over the yard i mean I, my yeah. my yard is you can think look how green our, this is december the 22nd look how green our latest and promo our, for natchez yes our camellias are blooming i mean it's just it's magnificent it's glorious Anything else that we need to throw in there? I'm sure there are. And when we're editing this video, we're going to be like, oh, we didn't talk about this. And oh, we didn't talk about that. And we'll say, oh, we'll put it in the next, the next one. <laughs> or we'll put it in the next one. That's right. <laughs> so thanks, guys. Thanks for being here. Like and share this video. If you want to see more of these videos, share it with your friends. Let's get these but, restoration video numbers up to match yeah, the house tour numbers. Yeah. Thanks yes. for being there. We love every one of you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.